and sorry, when I say a gentle death, obviously an unexpected death can equally be gentle or not so, gen so gentle. An unexpected death, as we talked about, a road accident can be a horrific death before the death happens. I, I have a story when I was, again, I was a vet, I was actually in Scotland and I was called to a road accident and it was a horse and the horse had been walking along the side of a road with a rider on it and one of these big um, transport trucks had come very near the horse and there was a metal rod sticking out from the side of the transport truck and the metal rod hit the side of the horse and it ripped the horse open from just near its tail to its shoulder. So if you can imagine the horse has got a line right along the side of its body, the skin has parted, the horse has fallen down by the time I get to it, it's fallen, fallen down. And it's a horrific scene, terrible scene. And there's people there, the rider of the horse is devastated. <clears throat> the police are there, the lorry driver didn't even know that this had happened. And these, this was in the day before CCTVs were, were everywhere. But the only thing I could do in this situation was euthanize the horse, because this horse was never, ever going to get better again and make it to be a riding horse, horse again. So um, some very sad stories about euthanasia uh, unexpectedly as well. So anyway, once we um, have passed on, any questions there, guys? No, okay, good. So we'll pass on, we'll pass on a little bit. I'm going to run down now about some aftercare facilities and what happens to pets. And then I'm going to finish with a very, very short YouTube video about a euthanasia. And it's actually a euthanasia that's set in Hong Kong. And I just found it by accident uh, a few years, years ago. So we'll do that at the very, very end. But anyway, pet cemeteries of pet cremation. And the, the one I've got illustrated here, TLC, um, if you see below it in English, it means tender loving creatures. Whereas TLC we talk about is tender loving care. And this is a cremation company set up a few years ago in Hong Kong. And, and we use regularly for deceased pets for our clients. It's one of many, but I can assure you, I've been to this company, I've seen their facility, I've seen how they look after their pet, the, the deceased pets. And in fact, my own dog, I talked about when he passed away last year, I took him to this company to help me for his final part of his journey. They also offer on the right side, side here, um, they, they offer urns at the bottom. Uh, you can get a DNA, like a diamond made, or you can get bits of the hair put in, in a neck, necklace, uh, as well as uh, they offer paw prints and pictures of, of your pet that you can keep forever. The pets are usually put in a cremation cremator, that the body is burnt at a very, very high, high temperature. And once the body goes in there, there's, there's no coming back. You'll, you'll come back, the body will come back as a small bag of ashes, not much bigger than um, my two hands like this for a 30 kilogram dog. So that's about the size of a 30 kilogram dog after cremation. Okay. If anybody wants to visit TLC, they're very willing for you to go and visit them. They also have a area that many people keep the ashes of their pets uh, for a certain time after, after death. They have a facility in Kuntong. So if anybody wanted to go, 
please don't hesitate to contact the centre and we can certainly uh, pass on your name and, and uh, details and we can arrange for you to visit. This is a, 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 a memorial service in, uh, I guess, the menu for the service. And I've got permission to, to use this from the pet parents for Pom Pom. And Pom Pom was a little Pomeranian. I first met Pom Pom when he was about 12 months old, I think. And he passed away at 17 years of age. So I went through a lot with Pom Pom, as did the, the family. And they, they had a lovely ceremony for, for Pom Pom over in, in Kun Tong. And this is a picture of Pom Pom just before he went into the cremator. I think you can see him lying very peaceful here. His hair had all been groomed and the, the daughter in the, in the home's favorite flowers were, all, were tulips. So Pom Pom, went on his final stage of his, his life after de death, sorry, after life, surrounded by uh, tulips. Uh, and also in this situation, we played music, uh, different kinds of music. Sometimes it's rock and roll, sometimes it's, it's Christian music, sometimes it's Buddhist chant. So again, it's a very individual what different people would like when they're pets go to the cremator. In other countries, this is Australia. This is a pet cemetery. And the pets usually have a small space in the, the cemetery. Some pets would be buried here. Other times the ashes might go in the ground. And usually people organize a gravestone with a, 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 a photograph sometimes of the pet here or a photograph of the owner with, with the pet. Usually these cemeteries, they rent the space to the pet parent for 10 years. My friend ran a pet cemetery in, in Scotland and she said it was very, very humbling and sad how people would come back year after year to visit the pet. The whole family would come back. Sometimes they would even bring a new pet with them. But it lasted on average up to about 10 years because usually by 10 years, people have moved on with their life. Sometimes people never go back and visit a pet afterwards. This is another cemetery in Australia. And in these cemeteries, even large animals, like horses, pet pigs, pet, pet sheep, pet uh, goats can be, be buried. And you'll see in this cemetery how people go with flowers when they visit their, their pet. And uh, usually the pets, if they're buried, they're buried in a box, a coffin, we call it in English. This word at the bottom here, a coffin. And again, many people have ceremonies with the coffins at the grave site. If a pet is cremated, usually they're put in an arm, a porcelain jar, just the same as humans' arms. This is a cemetery in, in the UK. You'll see this one here, Hartsdale Canine. So only dogs are in this cemetery. Beautiful weeping willow trees on the outside. And this one dates back to 1896. I mean, that's what, 130 years ago almost, they had pet cemeteries in England. And you can see this one, how they're beautifully kept with flowers and the grass kept. And you'd be hard pressed to know if this is an animal cemetery or even a human cemetery. Uh, in other countries. Sadly, I don't think um, this is going to be readily available anytime soon in Hong Kong. This is a pet cemetery in San Francisco. And I especially put this picture in because of this gravestone here. Can you see this gravestone that says Laddie? 
And have any of you ever seen the movies about the rough collie, Lassie, Lassie Come Home? It's, it's, when I was probably about your age, it was a very, very important movie. And it's about a, a collie dog called Lassie. And there's all sorts of stories about Lassie and Laddie. So this dog is a movie star, or it was a movie star. And that's why it's got a special place in this cemetery in San Francisco. And many dogs or pet animals around the world have got special places where they go to after death, that people visit them for years to come. Even in Hong Kong, I think there's, um, at the, the Jockey Club, they have some memorials to some of the horses that have um, been very famous in Hong Kong during, during the years. I just wanted to let you know that nowadays, there's more than one type of pet insurance available for owners of, of pets. The policies don't have great cover, but in, for some circumstances, it's certainly worth considering. In countries like the UK, there would be at least, at least 50 different options for pet insurance. But I think in Hong Kong, there's probably only two or three. There is a new one recently that you just sign up online and uh, it's, it's, it's a small fee per year. If you look on here too, they also have a cover for sudden death, unexpected death. Where is it? Funeral service, there you are number three on the list here. So they have different plans. So you can take out a high, lower, a medium plan that also gives you money towards a, a funeral service for your pet. Uh, pet loss is a very, very emotional subject. I put up here some uh, things you can go into Dr. Google and have a, have a look at. Number three on my list here, pet loss hotlines not available in hong kong but you can phone overseas and you can talk to somebody if you're so depressed or so upset about your pet loss you're grieving the loss of your of your dog and this grieving as i've mentioned already can take a long time your workmates or your college mates might wonder why on earth are you grieving your dog it's just a dog get on with life but for somebody who's lost a pet, that's the last thing you ever want to tell them. Because getting on with your life without that pet is not as easy as, as you may think. People nowadays plan for pets in their will. Now, our will is what's to happen to our belongings once we die, once we are dead. With many people, they worry about what will happen to their pets if they die. I worry about what will happen to my two dogs and two cats when I die. I have not done my will for my pets yet because I have many people around me who will look after them, but some people want to specify exactly what's to happen to their pets. A few years ago in New York, a very, 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 very rich woman died and her fortune was astronomical. She was the heiress to uh, Estee Lauder. I think it was one of the large makeup chains. She left so much money in her will to look after her, I think it was her 14-year-old dog. So her 14-year-old dog may have two or three or maybe five more years left. But all her money, all her vast fortune was left to the dog. Her family were really annoyed. Her family went to court to get money so the dog wouldn't get all the money. And at the end of the day, a, judgment, a judge ruled that the dog was left with, don't quote me on it, but two million US dollars to look after that dog for the rest of its life and the family were awarded 
the rest of, of, of our fortune. Now that's just a, an example of pets in your will. I have other friends, again in the US, they have some of these giant tortoises. Now tortoises can live 150 years, 160 years. Their concern is what's gonna happen to their tortoises when they die. So they have already written a will they've already given money to a tortoise sanctuary so they know when their torto when they die their tortoises will go to a tortoise sanctuary when they die so this is becoming more and more common nowadays for humans to make uh, uh, special instructions for what's to happen to their pets when, when they're not allowed. And there's even lawyers in many countries, especially the US, who specialize in, in looking after pets, being responsible for pets, for example, in some of these situ situations. 